Hi, it's me, back again. I've probably got a bit of a tan since I saw you last. I've been out sailing around the coast of New Zealand in my beautiful yacht, Beulah. Here she is for a couple of weeks while the other guys have been recording the lessons. Anyway, I'm just back here to close out the course. Uh, we've done a lot in this course. Uh, this is just a course summary. Um, we've covered a lot of ground and uh, you've learned a lot. And uh, congratulations for getting this far and double congratulations if you've managed to do all of the activities. At the end of the last course, more data mining with Weka. This is a slide actually from the last uh, lesson of the last course. I looked at what we'd missed in that course and I proposed that we might do a third course advanced data mining with Weka. Well, this is what we've done in advanced data mining with Weka. We've done most of the things that uh, I proposed at the end of the last course. A couple of things have been missed out, multi-instance learning and uh, latent semantic analysis. You'll have to learn those yourself, I'm afraid. Uh, we didn't do a lesson on one class classification, but there was a good activity on that, activity 3.1. And we've done some extra things. We've done some scripting in the Python and Groovy language, and we've done some applications. And of course, we've done the Weka package system. So we've done pretty well what we promised to do, or what we suggested we might do last time, and a bit more besides. I hope you've enjoyed it. The applications we've looked at have been particularly enlightening, I think. So the first one was Jeff. Holmes talked about infrared data from soil samples and he explained that it was hard to achieve sufficiently good performance for practical application in the activity. You didn't get there. You need to do more work on those data sets. You need to investigate uh, uh, dealing with outliers and uh, improving the quality of the data and some more uh, tweaking of the classifiers and filters in that huge space of experimentation. Then uh, uh, Tony, Tony Smith talked about bioinformatics the problem of signal peptide prediction. And uh, he emphasized that its domain knowledge is vital. You need to collaborate with experts. And that's true, of course, for all applications. And uh, you need to know whether you're looking for an accurate prediction or an explanatory model. And overfitting, of course, is a big issue in all applications. Uh, then Pamela talked about uh, functional MRI neuroimaging data. You know, what's going on in your brain? It was a 3D, a 4D data set the three dimensions of your head plus an extra dimension of time. Uh, and uh, again, the performance uh, we got in the activity was uh, not all that high, and there were various things that we might consider doing to improve that, uh, most of which uh, would involve uh, domain experts to help interpret the data. This is a common thread through all the applications. And a very interesting finding was, uh, in an early competition, uh, just the demographic data alone did well. In fact, it won the competition. So it's very important to evaluate what you're doing and uh, try the simple models first. We've been saying that all along. And finally, we looked at image. Mike told us about image classification and the specialist uh, feature extraction techniques for, uh, for images. Uh, in fact, when I asked him to do this lesson, we didn't have the feature extraction package that we now have in Weka. He created it in order to do the lesson. And this is typical in, uh, in applications. You need uh, different extraction techniques or different kinds of data. I'm interested in enabling you to carry on learning, to keep learning in the future. And the one really good way is to look at data mining competitions. There's a website called Kaggle. Let me just find it for you. Just do a Google search for Kaggle. And here we have it, uh, Kaggle competitions. There's a large number of competitions here. The first group, this group here, these are the featured competitions. And here you can win money. This uh, AI science challenge is worth 80, worth 80 grand, for example. And the Home Depot product search relevance for 40 grand. You can win real money doing data mining with these competitions. The second group of competitions are for recruitment purposes. You can get jobs. If you do well with the Airbnb challenge or the Telstra challenge or the Yelp challenge, they'll offer you a job in data mining. So that's pretty cool. Uh, here are some featured data sets, actually the IRIS data set uh, you're very familiar with from the first courses. Uh, but here are some interesting ones, the ocean ship logbooks and uh, salaries in the San Francisco area. 
And some data sets we're playing around. Here's the San Francisco crime classification data set. Sounds very interesting. And these last, this last group is kind of getting started, sort of tutorial educational competitions uh, where you can play around with these and look at what other people have done. These are all current competitions. You can find the past competitions by looking for completed competitions. That's the phrase. Let's just look for those. And uh, here we've got competitions from two years ago. Half a million two years ago. Sorry, you're too late for that. Uh, but anyway, uh, someone won half a million uh, two years ago. And here's the big money in competitions. Here's a quarter of a million. Again, a couple of years old. So there's just a lot of uh, past competitions. On the Kaggle website, we have not just those competitions, but information about completed competitions, past solutions, uh, interviews with, uh, with winners on the Kaggle blog, and descriptions of winner solutions. So there's a lot of information there. If you want to keep learning about data mining, then Kaggle would be a good place to start. I just have to finish with a little word on ethics. Don't forget, I'm always saying this. Here's the ethics of data mining is uh, very much in the news these days. It's just a few web quotes I got with a very quick search. More than ever, knowingly or unknowingly, consumers disseminate personal data in daily activities. Well, we all know that. As companies seek to capture data about consumer habits, privacy concerns have flared. Yes. Data mining where legality and ethics rarely meet. That's an interesting uh, little title. And the point of that article was that uh, just because you're doing things legally in accordance with the law doesn't necessarily mean you're doing things ethically. I would like you to do things ethically because you're an ethical person. It's the right thing to do. You have personal integrity. But if that's not enough for you, there are good business reasons for doing things ethically. Big data might be big business, but overzealous data mining can seriously destroy your brand. You have to be very careful when you're doing data mining. And the uh, final one, what big data needs, a code of ethical practices. So please be aware of ethical issues when you do your data mining. Well, that's it. This is the end of the course. Uh, I hope to meet you again in some other place, some other time. I look forward to that. Um, meanwhile, enjoy your data mining. Good luck with the uh, assessment that you're about to do to get your statement of completion. And while you're doing that, I'll go back to doing something I really love and play some music. Bye for now.